Vauxhall's Grandland mid-sized SUV no longer has an X in its name, but does it still have the X factor? Well, it remains an affordable, well-equipped mid-sized SUV, and it now has a sharper look and a much more modern cabin. Plus, if you happen to want a plug-in hybrid engine, it's still one of the cheaper options in its segment. Engine-wise, this Grandland model hasn't changed much. As before, almost all sales will be of the 1.2-litre, 130 PS, three-cylinder petrol version, available either in manual or automatic forms. In manual form, it makes 62 miles an hour in 10.4 seconds en route to 122 miles an hour. The alternative is a 1.5-litre diesel, also with 130 PS, but only available with a manual stick shift. That manages 62 miles an hour in 12.3 seconds en route to 119 miles an hour. Vauxhall doesn't think potential buyers in this segment really need four-wheel drive, not even with the top hybrid plug-in model, which used to have it but now doesn't. As before, this PHEV variant, which is what we're trying here, uses a 1.6-litre petrol engine, but there's just one electric motor mated to it in two-wheel drive form, so the combined power output is 225 bhp. That gets you to 60 miles an hour in 8.9 seconds, and the top speed is 140 miles an hour, or 84 miles an hour in all electric drive, which lasts for up to 34 miles between battery charges. As for drive dynamics across the Grandland range, well, we'd anticipate that your expectations of a car of this kind when it comes to handling will probably be pretty modest. You'll want quite a commanding driving position, a comfortable ride, reasonable refinement, decently responsive engines, and well, that's likely to be about it. If you're after a C-segment SUV that can throw you around a bit, then this one certainly won't suit. As well as losing an X in its name, this Grandland gains quite a lot in terms of its adoption of the brand's far more interesting visor trim detailing on the front of the car. This sees Vauxhall's latest Griffin logo proudly positioned in the centre, flanked by slim LED headlamps and more muscular bumpers. Inside, changes have been made with the adoption of Vauxhall's latest pure panel cockpit with two widescreen displays for more of a digital experience. Ahead of the driver is a display of 12 inches in size, offering up essential information, while the central 10-inch display controls all infotainment via a touchscreen. As before, driver and passengers benefit from the elevated seating position typical of an SUV, which ensures good visibility in all situations. Right, time to take a seat in the rear. In terms of legroom, there's space for an average-sized adult to sit behind a six-foot driver in reasonable comfort. Like most cars in this class, you'd really be pushing things if you wanted to try and accommodate three adults back here. But a reasonably low centre transmission tunnel makes that possible if need be. Finally, let's take a look at the boot. Now, once the tailgate raises, you're faced with a square, usable space, though it's not particularly large in this hybrid variant, just 390 litres. That's quite a bit down on the more satisfying 514 litre capacity you'd get if you were to opt for one of the conventional engines. Interestingly, Vauxhall is refusing to drop diesel engines from the range, but black pump-fuelled Grandland sales will be quite rare, even though the 130 PS 1.5 litre diesel variant in question manages up to 54.3 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle and up to 136 grams per kilometre of WLTP rated CO2. Most customers will choose the 130 PS 1.2 litre three-cylinder petrol model, which in manual form manages up to 45.6 mpg and 140 grams per kilometre, or up to 44.1 mpg and 146 grams per kilometre as an automatic. The PHEV hybrid two-wheel drive model we're trying here, of course, does a lot better. 192 mpg on the combined cycle and 31 grams per kilometre. Plus, it can go 34 miles between charges that will take three and a half hours with a standard Mode 3 cable. You can reduce that to an hour and 45 minutes if you pay extra for your car to be equipped with the optional onboard charger. 
Vauxhall still hasn't brought us anything particularly new or innovative here, but it has now given itself a fighting chance of getting an important slice of sales in this vitally important, fast-growing market segment. The Grandland is comfortable, good-looking, well-equipped and practical, all attributes that will endear it to likely showroom browsers. Don't expect it to be particularly dynamically rewarding, though. Few SUVs are. You can, though, have much higher expectations when it comes to ride and refinement. In short, if you want an SUV in this class, there's no real reason why you shouldn't consider this one. And that, for Vauxhall, is a big step forward. Mm -hmm.